Independence. The London Underground system had already been bombed 18 times since 1885. Uh, so there was a pretty logical place to actually think about having a scenario. This really was what I call a no-brainer in terms of choosing it as, as a scenario for terrorism. In the months before 7-7, a city bank and the Metropolitan Police both ran exercises rehearsing their response to bombings at tube stations. The police exercise took place just six days before 7-7. They weren't doing it because they knew something in advance. It was common sense, not conspiracy. This was a projection of logical uh, scenarios based as much on historical evidence as what could happen in the future. Conspiracy theories ignore key facts about Peter's exercise. It was nothing like the 2003 full-scale exercise. Instead, it was entirely office-based. It involved just six people from Reed Elsevier a publishing company. Absolutely nobody involved, no one beyond the room involved at all, no telephone calls, no cast of Ben-Hur hidden around the corner. It was a gentle walkthrough based on uh, a scenario which tragically turned out to be somewhat more realistic than we realized. We now know much more about the attacks, but that hasn't stopped a significant number of people believing that the government could have been involved. Allegations of a ghost train, rumours of pre-planted explosives, mysterious warnings and talk of controlled demolition have taken root. Back at Birmingham Central Mosque, we were invited to a meeting to discuss the 7-7 attacks. We are not talking about conspiracy, we are talking about an alternative view. Like the 7-7 survivor Bruce Late, Dr Nassim had also been sent a DVD anonymously in the post. Now he introduced 7-7 ripple effect at the meeting. I don't know how many of you have watched the DVD, the ripple effect. Please raise hands who have watched the DVD. We have the DVDs, you can get it from the office, please watch it. Dr. Nassim made 2,000 copies of 7-7 Ripple Effect for the mosque. A message from Modi. The film's alternative theory of 7-7, in which the four British Muslims were deceived by the authorities and framed for the attacks, lands on fertile ground. Actors or patsies? This video is more compelling than the government version. The government has been lying from A to Z. Government lied about the weapons of mass destruction. Government lied about Saddam Hussein's connection with Al Qaeda. It's more than coincidence. What happened is exactly what it says in there. So you think that the government could have caused July 7th? Yes, yes. I mean, after seeing this, nobody can doubt. My only question is how these people who have made this, I mean, the disc. Where did they get the time and how did they observe the situation that they have been able to produce this? That is my only reservation. Other than that, I think if it, that is, if, they, if, that, if I know their source, of course I have no hesitation to accepting it. If people, independent people, can compile DVDs like this within, you know, a certain amount of time, using very, you know, they don't even have like the, what government resources have. How can they come up with this sort of stuff and make it so believable to the public? And why can't the government do the same to make the, um, to make the public believe that this stuff is true? Why can't they do that in time? Why are we being asked, why, should, why, why do we trust, trust the government's version? The question to be asked is, why should we trust the government? Massive effect. There is much suspicion about the government here, which helps conspiracy theories find favor. Whether the bombings were done by MI5, the Israeli Mossad, or both of them, and or others, has yet to be determined. But the one thing that we can be sure of is that it was not done by four young Muslims. The ripple effect is more convincing than the government statement. Why do you say that? Because of the key issues it has raised, because the flaws it has pointed to, which agree with the flaws that have already been pointed by other people, too. The sleeper must awaken. The sleeper must awaken. To many, these conspiracy theories are divisive. If people in mosques think that um, the government is so antagonistic towards them that they're actually willing to frame them for a monstrous crime they didn't commit, what does that do to levels of trust? 
that is a problem for the government and for everybody in this country. And there's concern that conspiracy theories could alienate Muslims from the authorities. It's crucial that uh, the police and the security services uh, win the trust and confidence of the Muslim community. That's where very useful information could potentially come in terms of preventing another atrocity. And therefore, I think it's very important that the government, the police and the security services pay attention to these conspiracy theories and do whatever they can to try and disprove them. Second chapter title. Although Peter Power is the focus of much of 7-7 Ripple Effect, he had not been sent a DVD by its maker. We showed him the film for the first time. On TV by Peter Power. Peter Power, dupe or accomplice? Why did Peter Power smirk, grin and giggle when he spoke about the coincidence that the exercise had turned out to be real? when lots of people had been killed and injured. What is funny about that? But Peter has been put in a difficult position. The false allegations against him are coming from an anonymous source. When you look at it closely, it is in fact quite menacing. It is in fact uh, quite worrying. And both the DVD and more important, my, my um, being mentioned in it repeatedly, um, and many, many of the emails that are particularly hateful have now all been passed to the Metropolitan Police. How can you prosecute someone who you don't know who they are? It's just not feasible to do that. The makers, they are in fact hiding behind a, a cloak of anonymity. So who is the man behind the film who uses an Arabic sounding name, Muad Deeb? Will he ever emerge from the shadows? Four years on from 7-7, there has been no public inquiry into the bombings. But important evidence of what happened has been released in three official reports. First the Home Office narrative, then two reports by the Intelligence and Security Committee. The committee tackles some of the conspiracy theories, calling them inaccurate allegations. It found no evidence that Peter Power's exercise on 7-7 was anything other than an astonishing coincidence. The committee says the allegation that this CCTV image is fake is unfounded. They say any anomalies in the picture are due to freezing low quality video. The committee also confirmed that MI5 had come across two of the bombers long before the attacks. But it concluded that MI5 did nothing wrong because they were not in a position to know that the two men were about to plant explosives. And a recent court case about 7-7 released significant new evidence showing these four men did carry out the attacks. Soon after, 7-7 investigators had uncovered the bomb factory in a flat in Leeds. And these photographs show the equipment at the scene. The court also saw an A4 pad with the handwriting of Khan, Hussein and Tanweer. It was found in the same flat evidence they planned the attacks. At the bomb sites, investigators found the explosions were caused by high explosives carried in rucksacks, detonated while placed on the floor of the tube carriages and the bus. There was no evidence of remote detonation or timers. And what about the Guardian report of witnesses saying the explosion came from underneath the tube at Edgware Road? The journalist spoke to other witnesses, closer to the blast, who clearly said the explosion came from inside the tube and not underneath. Skeptics who have relied on Tony Blair's statement as evidence there was a government plot to demonize Muslims these people are on weak ground. Act in the name of Islam. They ignored what he went on to say. But we also know that the vast and overwhelming majority of Muslims here and abroad are decent and law-abiding people who abhor this act of terrorism every bit as much as we do. We've got your uncle what is extraordinary is that conspiracy theories persist in spite of the fact that both Mohammed Sadiq Khan and Shehzad Tanweer recorded Ma 